Welcome everyone, it's Deborah Baker here on the Costa Blanca in Spain again for another Decroit pendant video and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these lovely flower pendants. So without further ado, let's get going. So I've sorted out some of the shapes that I think we're, are going to fire into the shapes that I want in order to make these pendants and you'll probably find you've got loads of bits of scrap glass of these shapes and sizes that you'll be able to use too. And I'm going to fuse them in the microwave kiln as I did in video 16 where we did micro dots or you can use an ordinary kiln. So now you have all your little bits that have come out of the microwave kiln are going to look something like these here and you'll have your dots from previous video. The next thing you're going to need is a base and I've chosen to do an oval. So do your oval however you want to do it. Uh, I've just used a template to get mine. You could just guess it. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, if you've got a torus saw then you're going to be well uh, away cutting that out no problem whatsoever or you can use your dremel to cut it out or cut out as best you can and then grind it into the shape you want so but whichever way you need a shape it doesn't have to be an oval it can be a circle square anything that you want but for this project i'm just going to do an oval I just like to try and get as much glass off as I can before putting it in the grinder because it just saves time then. And all these little bits of scrap are going in my clear pot for when we top things, put tops on some of the projects in the moulds which if you've seen my other videos you'll see that I do that a lot. So now you have your bits and your base, the next step is to compile them together. So I've started on this one, I have um, a white base, oval base and a clear oval base and I'm just in the process of doing this one and I've used a white base with this one because these are black backed decroic and if you did it on clear you would see from the black on the reverse of the pendant which I don't think would look very nice and this one we're going to use regular bullseye glass so if your pieces have come out not quite as small as you want then you can just trim them down which is what I'm doing here so I'm just going to show you this so basically I wanted them a little bit shorter and chunkier to go around there and they're all quite long and if I was to put these back in the microwave kiln like this now they probably would end up as circles as balls which we don't want so I'm not worried about the rough edges on them because they'll smooth off when we diffuse so I just get your clippers and cut it off, cut them off to how you want them. So I'm going to get these on and then I'm going to arrange them so that they look like a proper petal with some glass tack underneath. But I'm just, you could just cut these with your, if you haven't got clippers, you could cut it with your cutter and then use grosers to snap it or find some other way to snap it. So I've arranged these on here in a nice pattern, I hope. Anything that I didn't have, if I was short of any of the dots or etc., I put them, I use my microwave kiln 
and created some more. Obviously, you can just do that in a normal kiln. And a nice way to get the dots, if you're short of them for the pattern, is if you have frit. So if you've got some medium or coarse frit, you can just put that into the microwave kiln or to create the little dots that you need. And it is a little bit of a labour of love. You have, need a lot of patience. I've just put the glass tack on, which has a habit of sending things haywire, which it has done, has done here. But I'm going to uh, just make sure they're right when it's nearly dry and it's a bit tacky. But pretty much okay. These corners will soft, soften. And when this is dry, I'm going to put it in on slightly higher than a tack fuse because uh, I want it more of a contour fuse. I'll put the schedule below in the description because a tack fuse is not going to hold all these tiny little dots onto the glass. There's not going to be enough surface area of the dots touching the glass to hold it on. So a contour fuse is going to soften these and help them to stick better to the glass. Obviously you can use any pattern, but I just thought that this was quite a nice, interesting way of using up all your little bits. So I'll show it you when it's out of the kiln. Oh dear, dear, dear. Disaster. Too high a temperature. I'm gutted. I mean, it's still pretty, but it's going to need shaping again, and it's not how I intended it to be. This one didn't go quite as bad as that one, but the kill wash of it. You can see that that area there's melted together it's not supposed to do that the dots are melted together some of my little dots here have flown, <laughs> flown off and they're melted together this one's not melted as much as that one surprisingly and the little dots intact it just shows heat distribution makes a big difference and that's moved and that's moved and so and this one is just of you can see the dots, but then I wanted them as raised dots, so I wanted it just above a tack fuse and between a tack and a contour, I guess. But I'm going to do them again, so I'm going to prepare them all again and fire them again at a seven that was 780 degrees that I went up to. I'm only going to go up to 760 centigrade, obviously this time and um, see if we can do a better job. What a shame. Okay, so I've redone those. Similar, not exactly the same, but I've put some half flowers on here. I thought that'd be nice just to have some half flowers and, and you know, with this one, I haven't cut any special pieces. I've just used what I've got lying about which is the idea of it really but because I'm doing this again and you know what it's going to end up like anyway because although these were slightly overfused, it's going to end up pretty much like that I'm going to show you them when they're done of course I'm going to do something different with this one because I don't like to have things the same and I'm going to do something I did in one of my other little videos in that I'm going to sprinkle I think I'm just going to add a couple more coloured balls in there, but I'm just going to sprinkle in between all my decroit bits that I've got and try and sprinkle them in between that without disturbing everything, which um, might be a bit of a task, but we'll have a go. So I've just added a few little blue balls in there. This is going to be very interesting. Let's pick it up with my tweezers and drop it in. But I did like the effect that I did this in one of my other pieces because it did create a nice 
it added softness to the piece I thought. Just trying to get them in between, not on. Yes. Okay. So, revised filing schedule. And I will put the this schedule in the description as well. So here's the second attempt, which is a success. I would have liked it a little higher, a little, little softer, but not quite as soft as that one. So somewhere in between I would have liked, but they're fine, they're all stuck on there and it's a pretty pendant. Same with this one. I do like the effect of the bits of decroic frit that I added to that. If you compare it to that one, it just adds a little bit more sparkle, doesn't it? Softens the pendant a little bit and makes it just makes it a bit different. I'm going to quickly grind these on the grinder and put them back in for a fire polish just to straighten them up a bit but these I'm happy with the way that they are and then these are the original two which I've uh, shaped a little bit on the grinder to make them look a bit better and it's amazing what doing a little bit of shaping on the grinder uh, does to your pendants because they already look a lot better I've just laid the bales underneath them so you can see what they're going to look like with the bales on. And if you want to see how I glue my bales on, please look at video 11. And video 3 is where I get my bales from and how I choose which bales to use. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed making it. And um, hope to see you in my next video. Please like, subscribe, turn on notifications and thank you if you have already done that. I'd like to reach a thousand subscribers if possible, that would be nice. And I'll continue to do the videos as long as everyone enjoys watching them. Uh, so it's a goodbye from a rainy Spain at the moment, which is very unusual. But I'm sure the sun will be out next time I release a video. Thank you very much. See you soon.